Okay, pre-cal, in this video we are continuing solving our trigonometric equations. So we are still in Unit 7, Topic 3. So I am beginning with Example 8, and this should be your last video on solving equations for trigonometric uh, equations. So sol solve for each of the following equations, write your answers in degrees. So that's a little different. We, uh, our last video, we used radians, so this time we're going to use degrees. And of course, I've got my unit circle here for convenience, so I don't have to keep flipping back and, th back and forth. Okay, so I want you to notice on number eight, we have a couple of factors here. So this is a little, it's not really tricky, it's just you're going to forget what to do. All right, so certainly you do not want to FOIL these because then you're going to have a mess on your hands. You're going to have cotangent to the fourth, and that's going to be hideous. So remember from algebra, when you had a trinomial or uh, something that could be factored, you would factor it and set the factors equal to zero. That's what we're gonna do here. I want you to notice that there are no restrictions on this particular problem. That means that I'm going to have to consider not only the value on the circle, but then all rotations of the unit circle. So let's first set our factors equal to zero. And then we will solve this. Because remember, our goal is to isolate our trig expression on one side. So our trig term needs to be on one side of an equal sign. So I am going to set this first factor equal to zero, and I'm gonna isolate cotangent x. So I'm gonna start by adding one to both sides, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by three, and then I'm gonna take the square root. So plus or minus the square root of one third. I'm gonna have to uh, rationalize the denominator again. So I've got plus or minus the square root of three over three. Now remember, um, tangent and cotangent are tricky because you have to um, think of your quotient identities and divide uh, your, in the cotangent you have to divide cosine by sine. So remember, I've shown you this a million times, remember uh, when you do that along the unit circle, when you divide these, regardless of whether it's tangent or cotangent, you get a 1. But when you divide these, when it's cotangent, it's cosine divided by sine. So that means radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which would give me radical 3. Here, you're going to have cosine divided by sine, which is 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2, which would give you radical 3 over 3. So you have to consider these values. So cotangent x has a positive radical 3 over 3 right here. Okay. That occurs right there, but it is also going to occur right here. Okay. Okay, the negative one. The negative value will occur there. Notice, though, that it's also going to occur across from these values. Okay, but here's the deal. Since these are directly across from each other, you only have to consider one of them. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So x is equal to positive radical 3 over 3 at 60 degrees, but there are no restrictions. So that value is going to occur at another 180 degrees. So I am going to add 180 degrees to that. It's also occurring at 120 degrees, and since that is also occurring directly across from it, I can account for that by doing this right here. Now you can write all four of them if you want and then add 180 in to each of them. But since this is rotating 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, you're always going to account for that other value because of the nature of tangent. OK, 
Okay, so this is going to be my final answer without restrictions. Okay, so let me erase my unit circle here so I can look at the next problem. All right, so number nine, notice here we have cosine squared x minus three cosine x plus two. This is a trinomial, so I am going to have, oh, I did not finish number eight, shame on me. I'm out of control. Uh, I forgot the other factor, dadgummit. Okay, so cotangent squared x minus three equals zero. Sorry, babies. Okay, so I have to add three to both sides and then take the square root. Okay, just like that. Okay, remember these values occur right, oops, right here and right here. So plus and minus. They also occur um, right here and right here. But again, remember, since these are directly across from each other, we only have to account for one because of the rotation, because there aren't restrictions for this problem. So for these, x is going to equal 30 degrees plus 180 degrees n. And x is also going to equal 150 degrees plus 180 degrees in. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, so both of those factors, right? Set the factors equal to zero, this one and this one. So those are your total solutions. Sorry, babies. Okay, so for number nine, now I can go ahead and address that. For number nine, we are going to have to factor first. So we're gonna treat this just as if we had x squared minus three x plus two. So I am going to factor this first. So I've got cosine x, cosine x, and then two and one. I can only write that as two factors because two is prime. Since these are going to need to add to give me a negative and multiply to give me a positive, they both must be negative. So once I get my factors, I can set them equal to zero. So cosine x equals positive two cosine x equals positive one. I want you to recognize that on your unit circle, cosine does not have a value for two. So that one is not, we don't need to address that one. Cosine x equals one though, this occurs on my unit circle right here. And that is it, that's the only place that occurs. And that is at zero degrees. Notice that you are restricted on this problem. So the only place that this occurs is going to be right here. So x, cosine x is equal to one at zero degrees and actually at 360 degrees. So that is restricted to once around the circle right there. So that is your solution. Very good. Okay, so now um, I think I'm going to do the other two in another video.